So these are some t-shirts that people have printed in my art club. There are various different ways of printing shown here, as well as stencils that you'll be able to see. This is sort of a preview for what I'm going to show you in this course. There's a stencil, there's a stencil, and then this is a printed t-shirt, and again, another printed t-shirt. So these are the basic steps that you will be using for screen printing. You can go back and look in the slideshow in more detail if you would like, but you need to block the screen that you're printing with. Then you need to put it on whatever surface that you're printing, apply the ink to the screen and print. And I will be going into more detail. These are the supplies you need. First, the supplies for blocking the screen. And then there's supplies that you need to actually print on the screen onto your surface. Again, you can look at these in more detail on the slideshow. There are three methods to blocking your screen. You can use an exacto to make a stencil, scissors to cut out shapes for a stencil, or apply tape directly to the screen as you see here. Today I'm going to show you guys simple ways of teaching screen printing to elementary school students. The basic idea of screen printing is that there is a screen which ink is placed on and then it is spread through the screen onto either a paper or onto some sort of fabric. Now, the traditional way of doing it involves exposing a screen to light using different chemicals and those aren't really something that are easy to do in elementary school. So today what I'm going to show you is three different ways of blocking a screen that does not involve any of those difficult processes. The first technique I'm going to show you for blocking the screen involves creating a stencil and cutting it out with an X-Acto blade. I only recommend this for if you're doing an art club or maybe some select fifth graders that you trust to use an X-Acto blade. The second method I'm going to show you can really be used for any age group and it is using simple scissors and a manila tag board that I'm sure everyone has access to. And if you're ambitious enough, you could even do this with a first grade class, maybe even kindergarten, you make that decision. And the third one I wanna show you, I actually have the screen because I'm not creating a stencil, I'm actually taping onto the screen to directly block the ink. So this one is going to be a tape blocking method. As you can see, there's a GCPS logo that I printed onto this transparency paper. Generally in my classroom, I would use one of these for the students to draw a design before they cut it out with the X-Acto blade. But I wanted to show you this surface because it comes with the screen printing kit that I have added to my Google Classroom, a link to it. And these are more durable, so you can continue to print with them over and over and over. Whereas if you make a stencil with these, then there's only so many times you can print before it starts to fall apart. So I've printed this out um, on my regular laser jet, jet printer. And um, you will have the students cut it out with the X-Acto blade. I always do a demonstration for how to use the X-Acto blade with the students beforehand, and they're not allowed to use it until they have passed their training with me is what I call it. And what I tell them is to move the paper with their blade, don't move their blade. And I tell them to never have a finger behind the blade. And they have a learning curve with using this and some of them decide to use scissors in the beginning because they have rough cuts and it's not very smooth when they use the X-Acto blade. But eventually the students all figure it out. So now I'm taking out the last piece, and as you can see, I've cut out a stencil. So this part of the screen will be blocked. Um, this part of the screen will be blocked and no ink can go through. And this part, the ink will be able to go through. As you see, I did mess up a little bit right here, and that happens a lot with the kids. When that happens, we just use some tape and we tape it in place and then cut away the extra because the screen just needs to be blocked. It doesn't need to be a beautiful stencil. Now, I did wanna say that even though this material is durable, I don't know if it would work for every student because it does cut very easily. It does mess up very easily because of sliding. 
I just wanna show you some other stencils that were created in my art club with the Manila tag board. They still have the ink on them because after they were printed the ink, we didn't wash the ink off of these. You could wash ink off of these kind of stencils, but not off of these stencils. You just would reprint over the ink over and over. This one I've printed twice. So here's one that I made for my art club. And as you can see, I cut all that out with X-Acto blade. And then here's another one I did with my last name. As you see, it's starting to like mess up a little bit, but it's generally able to print over and over again. This is one that a student did and she cut a shape out and then also exacto in the middle. So she started with scissors and then she did the middle. This student wanted to figure out a way to cut a stencil of a pizza. So I had to tell her about leaving these spaces right here. And that's one thing we talk about when creating stencils is you have to have different shapes that are cut out and they can't all be connected or else the whole shape will fall out of the stencil. This student, she had that problem where she tried to cut it out, but the whole shape fell out of the stencil. So this 2020 wasn't on there. So instead of using this as her stencil, she used this to block her screen. And I can show you how that turned out. So in this one, it's a lot simpler. Again, I'm just gonna be using scissors. And if you wanna see an example, remember this one that I showed you where she cut it out with scissors. It did get a little more complicated because she added X-Acto blade, but we're just gonna cut out a shape that will block the screen. So I'm gonna go with something simple. I'm gonna go with a heart shape because that's something that kids always do. And instead of drawing it, I think I'm actually going to do something even simpler even easier to explain to the students. So if you fold it in half, then obviously it'll be symmetrical because as you can see, this student, her heart was not symmetrical. So I'm just going to draw half a heart. And maybe I'm gonna have a few hearts blocking the screen. So let's just make a few more hearts. And then of course we all know how to use scissors but let me show you what these end up looking like. These can also be reused even though they're not technically stencils, they can still be reused. And the cool thing about doing this method is these can be placed anywhere on the screen and you can combine both methods at the same time. Here we have one of those hearts that will be blocking the screen. The difference between cutting out a shape rather than do using an X-Acto blade to cut shapes out of the paper is that this is the part that will not be printed and the ink will be around the shape. Whereas with the stencil, the ink is going to be deposited inside of the shape that you cut. When I go to do the printing, you're gonna understand more what I'm saying right now, but when we cut shapes out, these hearts are all turning out slightly different. Um, when we cut shapes out, that's the area where there's going to be no ink. So that's the difference. When we cut with the X-Acto, we're cutting out the area that is going to be having ink on it. So I'm almost finished my second way of blocking the screen. So I have these hearts and these hearts will be blocking the screen when I go to print with ink and you will see that soon. So for the third method, again, anyone can use this method and this method could actually be used simultaneously with any of the other methods and students have done that in the past and I can show you an example of that. When you're printing the screen, the stencil or anything that blocks it do not go on the top, the ink goes on the top the blocking area goes on the bottom. So if you are going to be using tape, and by the way, this masking tape came with the kit that I've posted on the Google Classroom and so did this screen. There are better quality ones, but the kit that I posted really is just really cohesive. When you block the screen, you want to first do the edges so that the ink doesn't get stuck. And you wanna do this no matter what kind of blocking 
method you are doing, you want to take the edges. You'll see why later when we go to do the printing, but even if you're using a stencil, you want to use masking tape to block the edges. So first I'm going to lock the edges, and this is done again, no matter what method you're using. I'm tearing, but of course students, it's hard for them, they can use tape. And now I'm going to use the tape to block something, and I think I want to write some words, and you can use tearing or you can use cutting for this. I'm gonna use tearing because I like the effect that it gives. And I'm going to write the words art club because I think this is really best suited for an art club. And it's not gonna come out perfect, but I, I like that effect. If you want it to be perfect, you can cut the tape with scissors. And as you can see, I'm starting with the A over here because when the screen is flipped around, the A is gonna be this way. And then when it prints, it's going to say art this way. So I'm going to write the word art backwards. Anything that you tape on this side of the screen, you have to write backwards, sort of like in other methods of printmaking, how you have to do, um, you have to write backwards. I'm going really simple <clears throat> with my writing. Even though this method can be used by any grade level, younger grades might find it hard to do it. Again, it's really up to you how you wanna use these applications. I'm showing you the methods and whatever works best in your classroom, um, you can do it. The only thing about this method of blocking the screen is this can only be printed for the duration that this is on the screen. So if you're sharing screens with different students in the classroom, then you can only have the student maybe do one, two, three prints before they have to share the screen. Um, they're not gonna be able to pick it up and use it again like if they had a stencil like this, they could continue to use it week after week, day after day, all they have to do is clean it off. So this is sort of like a one-time use blocking method. Um, and again, like I said, it could be used simultaneously with the other methods. And again, I'll pull up a photo of a student who did that really, really well. So as you see, I finished spelling out the words art club. They're a little bit jagged, but I kind of like it that way. Um, I'm going to start adding some more tape. And this is just sort of giving the impression of brush strokes or something, um, something artistic. So if you're gonna be using the taping method, it's kind of for somebody who is a looser artist who wants to kind of do something a little strange. Um, it's not really for anybody who wants to be specific. This is sort of for your wild card kids. Again, it can be only used once, so that is what it is. All right, so I have finished blocking the screen, and it's kind of hard to tell how it's going to turn out. You'll see when it is totally done. Again, this is not an option for everyone, maybe an ambitious student, or maybe a student who has a really simple design who's younger, but you know, you can divide it up however you wish. On the front, it's going to look like that, and the dark part that you're seeing through here, that's what the ink is going to look like, and this part is going to be blank paper, blank t-shirt, whatever it is that you're printing on. So now we're ready to ink and you can either ink with one color, multiple colors, or you can ink one stencil, then make another stencil and ink another one on top of that. I will be showing those methods. All right, so now it's time for printing. I have three screens here and they're all blocked in different ways. I'm gonna show you three ways of inking the screens because you can really be as creative as you want, but I'm gonna show you three that you can sort of mix and match and get idea of how to ink the screen. Um, the first one, I'm going to just show you one color, the simplest way. The second one, I'm gonna show you multiple colors. And the third one, I'm gonna show you how to do it with multiple stencils on top of each other. The ink I'm gonna be using is Speedball Ink. And you can really get any brand that is safe for fabrics if you're gonna do fabric or you can get any brand that is permanent because that's what you want with a screen printing ink. However, if you don't want permanent, that could also be okay for you. 
So for this first screen that I'm using, I'm going to put a paper underneath. Of course, you know that you do not have to print on paper if you wanna do t-shirts like I did, but I'm just doing paper for the point of simplicity. The screen goes on top of it and the stencil would go between the paper and the screen. So remember that these are what I made with the scissors. You can place them wherever it is that you wanna place them. And just so that you can see, even though I did scissors because I did this whole symmetry thing, this actually did become a stencil. And if I wanted to, I could print this and the ink would go through here. However, I'm trying to show you this method of blocking, so I'm not going to, but I've actually created another stencil here. So whatever you're using to block the screen needs to go between the surface and the screen. And the screen goes this way with this part facing here and I'm just gonna place the screen over here and I would push the ink through. But as you can see these corners, the ink will not be very even. So I don't know if you noticed when I did the taping, I explained to you that you need to tape the corners no matter what blocking method you're going to do. So I'm going to tape the edges. Again, try to make sure it is seamless and flat. If it is not flat, if it is bumpy, you're gonna have issues with printing. So masking tape is a must for screen printing, no matter what method of blocking that you are using. If you're doing this with really young kids, you might wanna already mask the screen before they even get it because they might not be able to do this. So as you can see, I have now created another rectangle in here and this part is going to have ink in it. I'm actually gonna close it up a little bit more. And you use your tape to decide how big that rectangle is going to be. So I'm just gonna close it up a little bit more. And I'm gonna place it on the paper over my stencils and I'm ready to start inking. So I'm gonna get my speedball ink in red Remember this one, I'm only showing one color. I'm gonna get my popsicle sticks. I actually use um, palette knives for this, but the kit that I had came with popsicle sticks and this is really good for throwaway after a while that they don't have to, you don't have to wash the palette knives. However, palette knives are reusable, so it's up to you. You're going to put the ink above the area of printing. So as you can see, I am printing within this area. So I have to make sure that the ink is going to be in a line in that area. It looks like I missed this. And you want enough, you wanna predict how much you're gonna need so that it goes through the whole way. I think I might actually need more for it to reach the whole way down. But since I'm only doing one print, not multiples, I don't want to waste ink. So that's why I kind of am conservative right now. So you take your squeegee, you wanna get one that has a rubber edge like this. I've gotten ones that were cheap and plastic, they did not work well, you want this kind. And this does come in the kit that I have on the Google Classroom. You wanna put it at an angle. You don't want it flat, you want it at an angle so that this part is touching the screen. And with even pressure, you want to pull it all the way through. If you're doing it in groups, little kids, you might wanna have one kid put one hand here, another kid put a hand here. Um, you want, might want to use two for even pressure, but because I want to hold the screen, I'm only going to use one hand. If you were doing a group, you could have kids holding down the screen. So again, on an angle, you push the ink through. And as you see, I did run out of ink. There's some on here still, so I can kind of tap it and deposit it and push it through more. Looks like I'm going to have to add more ink or I could just take what I have off the squeegee and kind of deposit it right there. You want it to be as even as possible, so that might not have been the smartest thing, but we need to get the job done. As you see, that's where the tape is, so I don't need to go past there. There's a little area of there that I did not get, so I'm gonna squeegee again. I'm gonna go one more time evenly, pressing hard making sure that ink is going through the screen that is not blocked. 
if I was doing more than one print, I would have a line of ink left here. And then what I would do is I would push it back to the top. However, I don't have very much left. I was very conservative when I did it. So if I had more ink, I would push it back up to the top for the next print. Put my squeegee down. Let's see how I did. You slowly lift the screen up while holding down your paper or your t-shirt. And as you lift it up, that's your print. And as you can see, I didn't go all the way in the corner there. And these got attached to the screen. Um, if you wanna print this again, you just take this and place it onto your next paper and then print it again with the rest of the ink. I don't have any ink left because I was being conservative, but that is your first print. So if you remember, this is the one that we blocked with tape. And what I'm gonna show you here is printing with more than one color. So I kind of want to have it fade from green to blue. So um, again, I'm gonna put the ink above where I'm going to print it so that it covers all the area. You kind of want to try not to get it on the screen, the wood part of the screen, but you know, sometimes you can't help it. So I'm going to have two colors. Of course you can do multiple colors. You don't have to stick to doing um, two colors, but I'm just showing you two colors just so you can get an idea. I think I might want to lighten these up a bit. So I'm going to kind of spice this up by adding some white. And plus, because of, um, because of how much I have to cover, I probably need that much ink. All right, if I wanted to, I could mix these up, make it an even light green and even light blue, but I kind of like it marbled, so we'll see what that turns out like. All right, again, we have our squeegee and we're gonna run down on an angle and pull through. See that marbling? I ran out of ink. I'm gonna... Now this one is a little tough because when I taped it, I think I went a little too close to the wood. We'll see how this comes out. But as you see, there's two colors. All right, let's reveal, see how it turned out. Again, you hold the paper down, lift it up. If you see it separating like that, you know that it printed. All right, and there it is. It says Art Club with this rough edge right here and over here from the tape. So as you see here, it's just two colors, but I wanna show you that this girl here, she wanted this to be one color and the words to be another color. So when she inked her stencil, she inked this with a squeegee and then she inked this part with a squeegee next. I think you can either do like one giant squeegee with both colors like that if you want them different colors or she might have done this part this way and then this part this way, just putting the red ink here and then putting the black ink here and then doing it a second time. So you can do two colors in different ways. Here I just wanted to mix them but here she wanted the pizza to be one color and the words to be another color. So this is my final screen that I'm inking. And this was the GCPS logo that I cut out with Exacto. Now, as you can see, I've taped the screen already and I've taped it in its rectangle shape. The reason I've done that is because the stencil does not block the whole screen. As you see, ink would come on the outsides of it and I don't wanna risk that. Some people, they actually tape the stencil to the screen, but the reason I don't do that is for a few reasons. First of all, it could create some bumps along the way and then it won't print evenly. 
And then also the reason I do that is because sometimes it makes it harder for repurposing the stencil again um, to use at another time. So um, I would print it right on this white paper. However, this last example is showing you guys using two different stencils. So to do that, I need to have my print from another stencil already dried. So beforehand, I already have created this stencil and I've already printed it on this paper here. And I printed it in multiple colors, rainbow style. So like I showed you with the previous post, except for many more colors. Here I'm just showing you a clip of the previous day, me printing that first stencil. It has to completely dry for a full day so it doesn't stick to that second stencil. As you see, I'm just placing multiple colors this time and I'm kind of mixing to make orange and light green and purple because I didn't have any purple. And I'm just inking it the same way through the stencil. As you see, I did not tape around the stencil because I thought that I'd be able to do it without taping the screen. And I did get a little, um, ink that printed out here. So that was a mistake. Next, I'm going to take my stencil and I'm going to place it in the spot that it would make sense. So again, I've already printed one stencil and now I'm printing a second stencil. So I had to wait for this to completely dry. Generally, I would do it, you know, one session and the next session it would be dry line it up and this way you can make it whatever color you want and you don't have to worry about it interfering the idea that i had for this was to make it gcps colors i have to make sure that i'm going to line it up in a way that there is no screen that is exposed unless i want it to be exposed to be printed so here i go and i want to make this the burgundy the gcps burgundy color and i want it to lay right in there I'm going to add my red. However, red by itself does not make burgundy. So I'm also gonna add in some black. And I can mix directly on the screen or if you wanted to, you could have um, mixing cups beforehand or a palette beforehand to mix into and then you put the color from the palette or from the mixing cup. But I find that it's less things to clean if you just mix directly on the screen. The only disadvantage is that the color could come up something you don't like. All right, here I go, my squeegee. It'll only go through the part with the GCPS logo and I can stop there. I don't need to keep going because nothing else is exposed. I push it back to the top if I wanna print it again to see how there's more ink left to print it again if I wanted to print it somewhere else. So when I lift off the screen, you see that the two prints come together to make one image. I have shown you just printing on paper, but if you screen print on fabric, particularly t-shirts, there's more information that you need to know. I'm gonna be going over some of that information. And then additionally, in order to set your t-shirt, you should use an iron afterwards to heat it up in order to make sure that it doesn't come out in the laundry. So I wanna talk a little bit about if you're planning on doing t-shirts or any sort of fabric, but especially t-shirts, this is an example of what I did for my students, a demonstration um, for Art Club. So this was my Art Club t-shirt, and this is how the print came out. I'll explain the um, stencil in a little bit, but I want you guys to see that when you print on a t-shirt, there are a few differences. So this one is already printed, but as you can see, t-shirts can bunch up. So you don't want to place your screen down on a bunched up t-shirt. You want it to be completely flat and you want something to place in between. I just happen to have these pieces of acetate, but you want to open up the t-shirt to place the object in between because you don't want the ink to dry the two pieces together. You want it to be able to separate. So it's going to dry with this in between. And you wanna make sure that it is exactly where you wanna print and it covers all of the area where the screen is going to go. Now, I used a stencil that I cut with an X-Acto I had shown you earlier. And you see how that fits exactly in that space 
of where I printed. I actually printed this twice. So I didn't use two stencils. I used the same stencil, but I printed twice. If you look here, there's sort of a shadow that I used glow in the dark ink to print first. And then I let it dry for a week because art club is once a week. And then the second week I printed again with this rainbow color. And you can sort of see how I mixed in the white to make it light because I printed on black paper. And then I actually had to print for three days because I had to let it dry before I did the back. And for the back, I used another stencil. And you see how with fabric, it's like lumpy. You really do need to make sure when you're printing on fabric, everything is completely flat because it's not like paper. Paper is easy to get flat. Fabric has wrinkles. And then this was the stencil, I only printed it once, that I used to write my last name on the back. So those are a few things you need to keep in mind if you plan on using fabric, especially t-shirts. I just wanted to show you another shirt that did the two stencil method that I showed you earlier. This stencil, she cut out in scissors and taped a square on her screen. And then she had cut this out with an X-Acto knife. I hope you guys can recognize that by now. In a cup, she mixed blue and white ink to create this. Separately, the following week, she had a stencil where she had cut her name out with an X-Acto. And then when this was dry, she printed this with green and white mixed ink. So those are some examples of t-shirts. And finally, I just wanted to show you this stencil. Um, you've seen this print a few times by now, but basically she cut this out with an X-Acto and she messed up with the 2020. So instead of using this stencil, she used this and blocked the outside of her screen so that this part was the color of her t-shirt and the color was surrounding it. So those were just a few t-shirt comments that I wanted to make. And I hope you guys can try some of these things that I've talked to you about and hopefully you can find a place for them in your classroom and hopefully you'll have successes and I hope you've enjoyed this video. So you might be thinking, how do I apply this in my classroom? I've talked about that I've done it in art club and really there's not very many limits if you wanna do it in your art club. You can also do it if you think that you have older children that are capable of doing such a thing and you might wanna tweak how you do it. And then you could possibly do it with younger children if you have things set up for them beforehand and if they work in groups with maybe one person cutting, one person holding the screen, one person, two people inking, one person holding the paper, another person lifting it up, etc. It really is plausible that with a group you can do it with younger children. And if you do it in a group, it's also smart that they would do multiple prints so each student in the group would get their own print. And here I have a note about cleanup, just the fact that screen printing ink does stick, it is permanent. So what we need to do is either wash the screens and squeegees immediately, or if you are the kind of person who does the cleanup for your students later and you have like a bucket of soapy water or the sink stopped up where they can drop their screens in to be cleaned later, you just need to factor that into your class time. I've added here a website that I find to be a good resource in addition to the things that I've provided for you. And thank you. If you guys have any questions, then you can definitely reach out on my Google Classroom. I hope you enjoyed.